It's the race to Mars here, and we're chilling with Dale from Urban Never Flatline. I was interested in fashion was, I'd probably say I was 16, 17. In high school, I was just designing, drawing shirts, and I realized like then I really wanted to dress differently from everybody else. Partly because I didn't have the money to, like my parents stopped buying me stuff when I was 15, which is good for them, for me, for doing that. But um, I went to make the things that I didn't have or make the things that I saw that I didn't see in stores, but wanted to have, so I started looking towards fashion world. So what about the urban fashion gravitates you towards it? Uh, to me, really, it, it's, well, the first thing I realized was color, because color, to me, is just, like, so eye catch. you know? You can see something, how two colors work, and it's like, damn, that looks good, you know? And from color to the free of it, you know, it's, it's, there's no exact boundaries to it. You can't really say, oh, you have to do this, this is how it has to be done. It's how you interpret it, you know, you do it the way you want to do it, and whatever feels comfortable to you, and I like that. On your website, it talks a lot about dreams and reality. When starting up Urban, what were the dreams you had for the company? And at the time when starting it, what were some of the realities of starting your own company? The dream initially was to open a store. Like, I wanted to have a boutique where it could just be people you don't even gotta buy anything, you know. You just come and just chill out, just relax, you know. Just talk, chop it up, do whatever, and then you have nice clothes, nice music blasting, just everybody chilling. So eventually, I mean, wait, eventually that's the kit. That's where it started out as, but eventually it became to actually want to have multiple stores and not just stores, but different types of things. Like I want to have recording studios. I want to have like a, it's a conglomerate of businesses I really want to have, and they all are centered around people doing what they love and like helping people who are really passionate about what they're doing to excel in that. Like if you want to draw whatever it is, like I'll have certain places for that, certain venues and certain activities that help that your skill progress and eventually get you to where you want to be at. And realities, I realize it's hard. <laughs> it, it, it's hard running business. There's so much money going into it. You got to be conscious about how much you're spending, how much, man, it, it, it's a lot. Um, off top, I say the biggest reality was it's not a game. You can put a lot of money into it and lose it just like that. So, how did you come up with the slogan "Never Flatline," and how does it relate to your company's vision? It was actually my boy who came up with that. Um, I was there's a person that I wanted to do a second line with. He, me and him were just brainstorming, and he was like, um, coming up with different ideas for my brand. Like I wanted to bring him on design team with me, and he just said one time he's like, "Never Flatline." I was like. I wrote it down on paper and I was like, yo. Like when I looked at my logo and I looked at the symbol in the middle, it's the EKG sign. I'm like, never flatlining. If you're alive, which is, I'll explain a little bit about this. The EKG in the middle is the EKG sign. And do you know what EKG machine is? If you're in a hospital, you hook up to the machine. If you're alive, you have a pulse, it's beating up and down. If you're dead, it's flat. And so when he said that, I'm like, that fits in exactly with my brand. Never flatlining. You're alive. You have life. You have opportunity to do what you want to do. You never fly on it, you're not dead. You have all the opportunities. So I'm like, that really worked. So I just ran with it. So I know on your Instagram, I saw you sent items to Wale and all of honor, and that must have been like a really big moment for you. So what was running through your mind when you was um, shipping out those items to those people? It was actually at my school, King University. We had a homecoming um, concert. And unfortunately, I didn't get to give them the package myself because if I was able to, I would like to give them a few words and let them see like, this kid really passionate about what he's saying. But still the fact that they have my products in hand and I actually have a picture of El Varner like with my shirts is, is a humbling feeling and it makes me more hungry, you know, because like if I could get to those two, there's so much more people I can get to. So like I, I didn't it was a really good feeling. I'm gonna keep it honest, it was a really good feeling, but like two days later I was off of it. I was like, damn, I want more. I'm trying to see where I get to next. So uh, it, it made me more hungry, in other words. Everything's doing sex, that's the yeah. first thing. And I guess I pick colors that both parties can rock with, you know? Like, I don't try to make it too manly colored or just too solid for the dudes. Like, it appeals to women as well, and they like it. They, they like the logo. And I'm surprised because the girls are mad to think it's a heart, but guys, you know how some guys be like, oh, nah, bro, I ain't rocking no heart, you know? I'm surprised they haven't gotten that. Like, 
I got some people that I know to be pretty tough, like, damn, that shit's hard, and they want to wear it. So I'm like, that's pretty cool. I'm excited about it. I'm anxious to release everything, and I'm just happy as hell to be doing it, honestly. Like, I like how I've changed everything around, and I think it's going to be really good.